Hey everyone, welcome. In this presentation, I'm going to show you how to present a choose your own adventure using PowerPoint Zoom. A lot of branch and scenario techniques and this is gonna be really fun. So let's dive in and see an example of what this is. I'm gonna use a lot of colors and shapes for this, but you can put your own content into your slides. So first of all, I have an option to choose a triangle. You can choose a blue triangle, a red triangle, or a green one. And these are all hyperlinked and it'll animate to the next slide. In which case I have the option to choose a shape. I can choose a rectangle or a circle. And based on what I choose, it'll go to a different place in the slide and have an animation. And it looks like I have now found the sleeping panda. That is my adventure. So let's see how to create this. All right, we're gonna start with something of a template. I have three sections here. I have a blue, red, and green section. I have a blue slide with a white triangle, a light blue slide with a dark blue rectangle, and then a dark blue slide with a blue circle. And I replicated that for red and green as well. So what I want to do is create a branching scenario where the user has to choose between the blue, red, and green triangle slides. And once they choose that slide, they'll have another option to choose a different shape. So I'm gonna go up to the insert tab and insert zoom, and I'm going to insert slide zoom. Here I can choose which slides I want to have on the screen. And I am going to choose the triangle slides. I'll go ahead and insert those, and then I can work to arrange those. So these are all hyperlinked to those places on the slides. And you'll notice that if I change the slide, then it updates in real time on here and it changes it on there because this is literally a thumbnail of those slides. And if I hit undo, then it changes it back. And it'll also morph to those slides as well. So if I preview just from right here, then I have the option of going to either the blue slide or the green slide or the red slide. And so that's the first step of my choose my own adventure. On to step two. Let's assume that the person chose the blue slide with the triangle. Now I want them to have another choice, either the rectangle or the circle. So what I'm gonna do is on this slide, I am going to choose insert zoom slide zoom, and I will choose the blue options here. Here's the thing though, I don't want the thumbnail on the original slide to have these elements on them. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these off to the side, right over there. And you can't quite see, but I have a text box off screen. It's just slightly off screen. It says choose a shape because that's what I want them to do. I'm going to duplicate this slide now, and I'm going to use the morph transition to make some changes. First of all, I'm going to put this triangle. It's going to fly way off screen. I can put it way out there and even make it a little bit smaller if I wanted to. Now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to drop these elements down and I will put these on the screen. And lastly, I'm going to go to transition and apply a morph transition. That way all these elements will morph onto the screen. It'll be animated. Okay, so I'm going to go back. What we have here is an initial slide where the person has to choose one of these elements. They'll choose the blue with the triangle on. It'll take the user to this slide and I want to advance the slide automatically after zero seconds. So it'll land on this slide and without the user doing anything, then it'll morph into this one where they can choose their shape. And then they can either choose the rectangle or the circle. So let's preview that so far, see what we have. I have choose a triangle. And if I choose this one, then it morphs to choose a shape. And I can choose one of these shapes then. This one or that one. And I want to take this a step farther. I'm going to duplicate both of these slides and I want there to be some kind of animation. For this presentation, this will be the end of the road. They have chosen their adventure. So I'm gonna modify this box. I'll go into insert and I'm going to insert an icon. I'll choose stickers. And for that last one, I chose the sleeping panda. I really like that sleeping panda. Sleeping panda resonates with me. So I can make that smaller if I wanted to. I could add some elements to it, maybe a drop shadow or a border or some other effect. I'm just gonna leave Sleeping Panda alone. And I'm gonna go up to Transition and click the Morph Transition. So now this slide with the rectangle is gonna morph into a larger rectangle with a panda. And I just go up to slide number four then and I'm going to advance it automatically. And I'll do the same thing with these next two slides then as well. For this one, I am going to morph it slightly. I'll make a big rectangle. I'm gonna insert. 
a sticker. And sticking with the panda theme, maybe I'll go with a sad panda for this one. I'll shrink him down slightly. And then go into transition, I'm going to morph this one. And then go to slide 6, I want that to advance automatically. So now we have two scenarios. I'm going to create six scenarios all together. There will be two for blue, two for red, and two for green. Let's preview what we have for blue. So choose a triangle. I'm going to choose blue. And now I'm going to choose the circle. And there's my adventure. If I back out again and choose the rectangle, then I'll find my sleepy panda adventure. So now I'm just going to do the same process for the red and the green slides. And I'm going to speed up my time so that you don't have to see me walk through it in real time. Okay, before we go and preview this, I'm going to add one more element to the end slides of the adventure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a box over everything. I'm going to put the outline as none, and I'm going to fill it with white and stretch it over the entire slide. Now I'm going to go into properties, and I'm going to bump up the transparency to 99%. So essentially it's invisible. You can't really see the box, but it's there. And then what I'm going to do is hit control or command K and I'm going to hyperlink this so that it goes right back up to the title slide here. Hit OK. And now I'm going to copy that and paste it over these other slides. So now whenever you play out a scenario, whenever you've chosen your adventure, you can always return back to the original slide. And ideally you'd want some kind of instructions. Click here to start over. I'm going to skip that just because this is a presentation between you and me. And I'll emphasize a few moderations that you can do. Obviously you're not going to make a presentation like this where you have to choose shapes and colors unless you're working in a preschool or early elementary program where you're actually teaching shapes and colors and sizes and such. But some things you can do to embellish this is if you click on a shape, you can go to Format Shape, and you can add various effects if you wanted drop shadows, or if you wanted soft edges, or a glow. You can also click on these slides that have the zoom thumbnails, and go to the Zoom tab, and you can choose one of the zoom styles. You can put frames, you can put drop shadows, you have effects options here as well if you wanted to add a glow to your box, for example, or change the borders. I can also change the zoom background, which would take the slide and it would delete the background of the slide. So in this case, it takes out everything except for the object that's on the slide. Now if that were text or if it were some kind of image or an icon, then that would show up but the background would not. And that gives you a little bit of flexibility because you can put one of these zoom objects on top of another object, a shape or something of your own choosing. And it has the elements from the slide without the background of the slide, so it gives you more customization. Another thing you can do, if you remember, I have the choose your triangle. When they click on the blue triangle, for example, I can animate the transition speed. Right now I have that taking two seconds, and suppose I want to change that to one second. I can advance slide, I advance it automatically. You can choose to advance it after a certain amount of time if you would like. And same thing for these morph transitions. How long do I want the morph to last? I think two seconds is good, but you might want to have it faster. One second, half a second, or slower, like three seconds or four seconds. It depends on the effect that you're going for. And the last thing I'll do is I'll go back to this first slide and I'm going to put a transition. I think a fade transition. And that way when I go from my scenario, my adventure that I've chosen, and want to return back to the main slide, it's not an abrupt change, that it's more gradual. So let's see what this looks like. I'm going to choose a triangle. I've been focusing on blue lately, so let's give red some action. Now I can choose a shape, 
So this shape, I chose the Amorous Panda. I'm gonna hop back out to the main menu. Let's choose green. This time I'll choose the green circle and that released the board panda. I'll choose red again and this time the red circle. Last time we got amorous red, now we got angry red. Now the very last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hop up to slideshow and I'm going to set up my slideshow. Right now it's presented by speaker which is typical. This is the default setting but I'm going to choose browsed at kiosk full screen. And what that does is it locks down all of my keyboard and mouse controls, meaning I can't advance or return a slide unless I click on an active element. I'll show you what that means. Here's the entry slide. If I click on any part of this screen other than the hyperlinked areas, then nothing happens. Normally, if I click somewhere on the screen, it'll go to the next slide, which the next slide happens to be the blue triangle. But in this case, I want to force my audience into actually choosing their scenarios instead of letting it play out in a linear fashion. And so they have to choose one of these slides. Now same thing here, I can click on various places on the screen, but it's not until I actually click on something that's clickable that I move on to the next screen. Now this entire thing is hyperlinked with a white invisible box, it's 99 transparency, so if I click anywhere, it'll take me back here. If I wanted to, then I can create a back button on any of these slides, and the back button would either take me to the next level up in the branching scenario or right back to the beginning, so start over. And these are the first steps in creating a choose your own adventure presentation in PowerPoint.